So I'm always seeing these homesteading mamas on, over on Instagram drinking their coffee while they walk around the homestead doing their chores in the morning. Seems really inconvenient, but I thought I'd try it. <laughs> I find transplanting onions somewhat tedious because they have these teeny tiny delicate roots but they're also very long at the same time so you got to get the hole nice and deep but and somehow get them down in there without damaging them so it's a little tricky because there's just the plants are just so tiny and I'm putting them about three to four inches apart. Okay, well I have finished planting the onions in here and I did not have as many as I thought. So I actually have about five square feet of space left in this bed with nothing in it. If you remember when I first planned my layout for the garden this year, I miscalculated my um, distance, my length, and ended up a row short and was unable to plant my carrots. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and plant some carrots here in this bed in the extra five feet that I have. Um, it has been a very hot week, <laughs> like exceptionally hot for this time of year in the mid 80s. And carrots do not like to dry out while they're germinating. If the seeds dry out, they will not germinate. And they're actually kind of tricky in that regard because you have to keep them constantly moist. So probably not the best week to plant them, but we're going to try it anyway. And I'm actually going to use... Um, Oftentimes you'll see the carrots packages will tell you to just um, surface sow or just lightly cover with soil. I think I'm going to put a little bit thicker and I'm going to use some potting soil just so it's nice and light and easy to dust over top of it. But I'm going to do it maybe a half inch thick, quarter to half inch. So hopefully that will help to keep the moisture on those seedlings a little bit better, on those seeds, sorry, a little better so that they can germinate and we can get some carrots. Carrots tend to have pretty poor germination rates, probably in part due to that issue with not liking to dry out. So, it's best to sow heavily, just kind of scatter them everywhere, and then come back later to thin it out because you just don't know how many are gonna actually sprout. So I'm always seeing these homesteading mamas on, over on Instagram drinking their coffee while they walk around the homestead doing their chores in the morning. Seems really inconvenient, but I thought I'd try it because <laughs> I really wanted some coffee right first thing this morning. Anyways, I'm, so I've been getting a lot done lately. I've been really, really busy around here. I haven't been recording it a lot just because it's just been so busy. Um, but I will show you like a lot of the different things that we've been doing and starting with something Mike did last night. I'm really impressed. He got this entire project done while I was making dinner by himself really fast. So be impressed. I was. This is the back side of the barn and look at that window. He cut and installed that window by himself in like an hour or less. I was, I was really, really impressed. <laughs> we still need to get some hardware cloth up on it um, just to make sure it, to keep predators at bay and everything. But yeah, so this is the goat side 
and it has a window now so we can get some cross breeze going through there and keep it nice and aired out so it's not so hot and stuffy and I'll show you in the inside as well you can actually see in here with the door shut okay now is where the coffee gets inconvenient I can't hold the camera and open the door and hold the coffee at the same time hey god Ta-da! it's so much brighter in here which makes it feel so much bigger and messier it's definitely messy yeah that clean out did not last very long <laughs> We do need to get this cleaned out very soon though because this past weekend I got a text from our goat breeder and we have baby goats picked out and they're going to be ready in two weeks. <laughs> we have a lot to do before then. So it's going to be really busy and crazy around here still, but we will definitely make sure to take you along for the ride. In fact, we actually went to go meet them yesterday. They're so cute. Here's some videos from when we went to meet them. Well, our baby goats have been born and we are coming to meet them for the first time and get a plethora of questions answered. So we're really excited to meet these little girls. This is a beautiful morning. It's just a little bit cool out. There's dew all over the grass. My feet are sopping wet and covered in grass. <laughs> but the sun is just coming up over the ridge over there. And you hear that? It's just so peaceful, so beautiful. Anyways, on my way back to the house here, I thought I would show you yesterday I finished planting the garden. And I'm always like, what else can I fit in here? <laughs> but this is what we have. This was what was planned and actually a little bit more even. Um, I'm sure if something else comes up that I just really want to plant. In fact, I have a couple starts on my front porch that I might tuck in here or there. But so far, this is what our garden looks like right now. <laughs> I just love this fence. And it looks so pretty with all these wood chips. Ugh, I'm loving my garden this year. So right here, by the fence, we have most of our squashes. There's two zucchini, the rest are winter squash, and then that's a sunflower right there in the middle. Um, and then they can kind of trail up the fence as they grow. Next, we have our pepper row. There are a couple of different hot peppers and sweet peppers in there. And then tomatoes. Lots and lots of tomatoes. I also have some basil down here and the bugs have been eating it, which is kind of weird. Usually they leave really strong aromatic herbs alone, but you know, whatever. And then a calendula, which actually was supposed to be in the front yard, not back here. Oops. This row, I don't know if you can see because it's like really tiny. Let me see if I can zoom in here. Yeah, so these are our beets that I planted from seed like weeks and weeks ago and they seem to be going really slow. And then there's also lettuce you see there and then at the end is some Swiss chard and another sunflower. Right. And then this row we have, oh hello cardboard. <laughs> um, 
that dark spot. Ooh, actually, there's some green coming up in there. That is a cucumber. Then our peas that we planted several weeks ago. Started to climb up this beautiful trellis that my husband helped me make, and we actually haven't finished yet, hence why it's a little saggy. We'll get to that. <laughs> and then the rest of the row is um, beans. They are Cherokee Trail of Cure beans. They can be used as a green snap bean, or you can leave them to um, develop further and use them as a dry black bean. Um, over there at the far end, we have some pumpkin, little pie pumpkins. And then over here is a blue Hubbard squash. I'm not really so much interested in eating this one. It is more of a trap, sorry, a trap crop for the squash flame borers. Apparently they really like blue Hubbard. So here's hoping that they eat it instead of all my other squash. Um... Those two beds there are both corn. They have some volunteer sunflowers growing up in them from last year and some dandelions that I just let be that I can harvest the roots in fall. Uh, the left one over there also has the garlic that I planted last fall that's doing really well. And then I just planted a couple of watermelon in the front rows there of those boxes. And this is the onion that you saw me planting and then the kind of middle there is carrots and of course our strawberry bed. As you can see there's still some grass that I need to pull up from around some of these beds. I got most of them. That one I kind of left alone because the baby bunnies. And we're hopefully getting some more wood chips today to finish chipping out the walkways here so we can get rid of this. I don't hear any children fighting yet so I'm gonna sneak out front and show you the front beds and what we've been doing here as well. Firstly, we have a couple of seedlings left here. Those are a different variety of sunflower that I tried this year. They were just a little tiny for me to transplant at the time. They're probably getting big enough now though. And then my ground cherries that took like forever to germinate and two different attempts and now I think they all came out at the same time. So that's okay, I will take it. They are a little slow going. But it has been really hot, so they've been, it's been hard to keep them wet, moist. But those will be going in the front flower bed here soon. Also on the left here is a couple more echinacea. I didn't really have great success with my echinacea. I planted like, I think six of both varieties and I only got like two or three each. So, and then some cilantro that my son planted. <laughs> and then I picked up this dill at a local greenhouse. I don't know where I'm gonna put it yet, but I wanted some dill, so I got some. Maybe I'll tuck that into a corner of the garden. Over here, we stopped by a different local greenhouse yesterday, and I got found some lavender. They didn't have any at our normal greenhouse. And some marigolds that I'm gonna plant over in a window box by the chicken coop. I don't know if you saw that. And then my son has just been obsessing with these snapdragons <laughs> every time he sees them at the store, so he convinced daddy to let him get them. <laughs> and then I also got this fennel because my husband loves fennel seed, but I have not been able to grow it from seed to save my life. So when I saw they had some starts, I went ahead and grabbed one. And I don't know where I'm gonna put it, but we'll find a place. The kids and I had planted some little container plants just for fun. All right, but here, they haven't popped up yet, but some of the extra seeds from the little pots I just threw in here and have been desperately trying to keep moist because these beds are like a desert. But some of them are coming up, on this half at least. So we might get a few flowers here and then over here um, are some California poppies that I just threw in here. They apparently really like dry, so hopefully they will succeed in this spot. Here's the big flower bed that we've been working to redo this year. I ran out of mulch, as you see. <laughs> so hopefully, as I said, we'll be getting more today and I'll be able to finish the rest of this. But I went ahead and planted anyways because we didn't know when we were going to be getting it. So here are some pink dandelions. Behind that are some 
daisies and then the echinacea that came I think those are the I think those are the green ones and then the pink ones are the ones I still have to plant and lots and lots of thistles that I keep pulling out and keep coming back and I really hope that once I get the mulch in and the ground stays more moist that these will start looking better guys <laughs> guys I'm not doing so hot thus far I did use some seeds along the back wall there. That's all thistles. Those are not plants that I wanted there. <laughs> Those need pulled out. Um, but I just got a climbing flowering vine to go up these trellises right there and there. And in between them, I planted some marshmallow plant from seed. A few of them are starting to pop up, but it's a little slow. And then down here in front, that's where the calendula was supposed to go. And in front of it, I planted some purple plantain, but I'm not sure any of it came up. Yeah. I'm struggling with the seeds this year, apparently, guys, with the herb seeds. There's a couple of volunteer strawberries here that survived from last year. Um, these are my holy basil. And then the ground cherries will go back there. And over here, we just have some culinary and medicinal herbs here. This is oregano and those little ones in the back are catnip. Then some thyme that survived the winter and is now flowering. Is that pretty? Sage, rosemary, yarrow back there. And then we have this fun thing. I built this teepee out of some of those um, honeysuckle branches that we cut out from over here. And I'm going to be growing some beans up it. Use it like as a bean trellis. If I had thought about it ahead of time, I'd have used a different bean variety. But I didn't. So this is just more Cherokee Trail Tears. And then I also threw in some extra sunflower seeds over here. Just for some pretty flowers. That is a catmint plant that was here when we moved in. And that's just a bunch of weeds that I never pulled out. <laughs> Next year. Next year I want to turn this into a berry patch. And then these are just my mint, my potted mint plants. Over here, we cleaned out all this area from some pretty big honeysuckles that were just encroaching on the yard. And we planted two of my elderberries here. And they seem to be doing really, really well. That was a lot, I know. Hopefully you were able to see everything. Now these apple trees. They're doing really well this year. We were able to get new fencing around them to keep the deer off without actually um, like smashing the plants because this one just had some, uh, what do you call it? Like that plastic fencing around it, but it was like leaning really bad on the tree, which is why we now have this little limb supporter here to try to straighten out the shape a little bit. But it's doing well. You can see there's still some buds on this one. Some of the ovaries are starting to swell to produce and grow fruit. So I know some of them did, so that's good. If we can get like two apples from this tree, I will be happy. <laughs> but so we put up these better fencing on both of them just to keep the deer out. Cause that was a big issue last year. The deer ate the trees. Um, and we expanded the drip line underneath. And I tried to plant clover because it's a nitrogen fixer and it also works as a ground cover to keep the grass from growing underneath and competing for nutrients, but I've seeded it twice. And I don't know if birds are eating it or if it's just the crazy weather, but it's not growing. So we're gonna have to come up with a different plan for these, because I don't wanna leave this ground bare because the grass will just grow back in. So we gotta find another plan for that. The comfrey that I planted around this one last year did really well. It was like growing up like three feet tall, so I had to cut it back, but comfrey is a chop, chop and drop mulch, so it brings up nutrients from deep in the ground, and then you can just cut it off and lay it on the ground, and it'll decompose in place and feed the plant. Um, this one, I think it got pollinated really quickly, but I'm not seeing the swelling on the little ovaries like the other one, so let's see if we get anything off of it. But anyways, so that's the bulk of what we've been up to lately. Um, I'm sure there's other things as well, but that's been 
what's really been filling my time and then just trying to figure out everything that we need to get for the goatees and then trying to decide if we're going to do meat broods this year or not just I'm sure you've been to the store and you've seen the chicken shortages and the price is skyrocketing so that's something that we're considering still trying to decide if that's something else that we want to spend the money on this year because we're doing a lot of new things this year and we had to be wise so yeah we've been keeping busy and like I said I haven't been recording so I thought I would update you on all the things now I'm gonna go finish my coffee before it gets cold and make breakfast for the kitties